Okay, so let's go back to the description of branching processes. Now, uh, description of a Galton Watson branching process. Now, last time we gave the description using a colony of bacteria. This time I'll do the same, but with a colony of particles, so a system of particles. It's the same description, just in a different language. Instead of applying the model in biology, we are going to apply it in physics. That's all. Okay, so what you do is start with one particle and time zero. And at time one, this particle disintegrates or branches. That's why this branching process name is there into a random number of particles according to a priority distribution R on the, this is a priority distribution on the set of all non-negative integers. Now this distribution has a name, it's called progeny distribution because it gives the progeny of, of each particle. So what would be the next generation for each particle? Okay, so then at time two, each of these new particles, so this, these are already disintegrated from the first particle. So this new particle again disintegrates into a random number of particles according to the same probability distribution R, so same progeny distribution R, independently of other particles and also independently of the total number of particles at time one. Okay. This process continues. Okay. So this gives rise to a Galton Watson branching process. Now suppose xm is the number of particles at time m for every m bigger than or equal to zero. So clearly x0 is the random variable one because we started with one particle at time zero. Now we'll denote by psi ij the number of offspring particles produced by the j particle from time i minus one. Okay. So then over i and j, this is the double sequence, psi ij's, and this is a double sequence of iid random variables with common distribution, the progeny distribution, r. But clearly, since you start with one particle, in the first generation, or, or first in time point one rather, what you do is you have this, this particle branches into random number of particles following this distribution R. So therefore, X1 is basically just a random rule that follows this distribution R. More precisely in our notation, X1 is psi 1, 1. Okay. What is X2? Each of these psi 1, 1 many particles, rather each of these X1 many particles will branch into a random number of particles. More precisely, the jth one among them will branch into psi 2j many particles. Again, all of these are IID following the same distribution R, same progeny distribution R. And of course, there'll be X1 many particles. So this would be a random sum of the psi, I, psi 2j's. Similarly, X3 would be a random sum of psi 3j's, X2 many, up to some X2 many, because X2 many particles, each of them will produce particles for the next time. And this process will go on. So if you summarize this, what you get is that X naught is one with probability one. And for each non-negative integer N, Xn plus one is just psi Ln plus one L running from one to Xn. So it's a random sum of psi random variables, Xn many psi random variables. Of course, this Xn many IID psi random variables following each of these psi random variables follows the distribution R. And also by our assumption, not only that all the sizes are independent of each other, the number of particles produced from each particle, okay, is actually 
also independent of the total number of particles right? in, <clears throat> in that time point. So therefore, this, this entire sequence, so there's, there's a typo here, there should be L bigger than or equal to one. Anyway, this entire sequence is independent of Xn. Okay? Whatever is there at time point N, number of particles is completely independent of the particles each of them will produce. Number of particles each of them will produce. Now take I not equal to one and I one, I two, I n minus and I non-negative integers such that this joint probability is possible. Okay. In that case, the future given the past and present is same as the future given the present. The past is completely forgotten. This is because if you look at the form of Xn plus one, it only depends on Xn. It doesn't depend on X1, X0, X1, and so on. Of course, it does depend on them because Xn depends on them. But the point is, once you condition on Xn, you don't have to condition on anything else. Conditionally, on X0 to Xn, it just depends on Xn. There's no dependence on the previous ones. So therefore, this holds. So that that's just follows from the form of this. Because Xn plus one can be written completely in terms of the Xn. No other X i's are important here. Okay. Now let's compute this quantity here. So we are up in this far. Now what is Xn plus one? We know that Xn plus one is this sum here. So let's write that down. So Xn plus one is, is just this sum. So that would be equal to J. And we're conditioning on xn equal to i. Now, since you're conditioning xn equal to i, you can replace this by i. So this would be a sum from one to i of this guy, of this psi random variables. Now, of course, again with the convention that if i is zero, this is going to be zero. Okay, this random variable is going to be zero random variable. Now note that. All of these guys are independent of Xn. This is precisely what is written here. So therefore, this conditioning can go. Therefore, what you have is this unconditional probability. Now note that these, all of these are IID. You have I many IID random variables following the same distribution R, and then you are taking the sum of them. Obviously, the sum, because of our observation today, follows ith convolution. So of R, it okay, follows the distribution, follows the probability distribution, the ith convolution of R. So for this random variable has distribution, the ith convolution of R, of the progeny distribution. And of course, you're taking that random variable, taking the values equal to J, that probability would be just the Jth component of the ith convolution of R. So that's why you get this. So once more, the distribution of this random variable is just the ith convolution of R for any non-negative integer i. And then since I'm talking, I'm taking the probability of this equal to j, this is basically the jth component of this, of this distribution. Okay, so this gives us the following statement, which I had written last time. So the branching process XM is therefore a Markov chain with initial distribution A, which is delta one. So delta one is just uh, the Dirac probability at one. So run the distribution that puts mass one on one. And XM has one stiff transition probability PIJ given by this, this guy. 